Hello, Earth Science students. This is Mrs. Adams coming to you from Screencast-O-Matic. If you don't know anything about this website, it's really awesome. It's a great way to make your own videos. So today we're going to learn a little bit about the Global Wind System. You took notes on the system just the other day, and now we're going to see it in action. So I've put together this little PowerPoint for you guys to take a look at, and I'm going to walk you through how the Global Wind Systems work. You're going to watch me do it once, and then you're going to go through the PowerPoint yourselves and record it on your uh, worksheet that you have in front of you. So just sit back and watch and see how this whole system works together. So we're going to start at the equator. Hey, and remember, the temperature of the Earth at the equator is very, very warm. So to start the system, the air is going to rise in this location, hence my small purple arrow. When it hits the top of the troposphere, it hits the tropopause and it kind of hits this almost invisible barrier and begins to spread out. This is because of the Coriolis effect. Now, as it works its way across the top of the troposphere, it starts to cool down, which triggers a sinking motion, which you can see here by these arrows. And again, once it hits the Earth's surface, the Coriolis effect kicks in and it causes the air to spread out again. Now, since the Earth's surface is much warmer, which you guys already know, it's going to start to rise again. And the same process repeats again. Hits the top of the troposphere, spreads out, cools down, and sinks, and then spreads back across the planet. Okay? And this process is continuous. Okay? We call this a convection cycle. You guys know a lot about convection. We've already talked about the three types of energy transfer. So the mechanism behind the Earth's global wind system is convection. Now, each one of these individual convection cells that I'm circling right now is one of the global wind belts. So let's put this together. So at the equator, where the air is rising, we have the intertropical convergent zone or the ITCZ, sometimes they're also called the doldrums. Now, since the air is rising at this location, we know that that gives us low pressure. You learned about this a few days ago. And wherever there's a low pressure system, we get lots of precipitation. So warm temperatures, lots of precipitation gives us the locations of all the world's rainforests. At 30 degrees north and south latitude, we have sinking air. You can see again those purple arrows. So that gives us high pressure. We call these the horse latitudes. High pressure gives us very dry air. The air is very stable. And this is the location of most of the world's deserts. And then again, at 60 degrees north and south, the air is rising, so low pressure, lots of storms. And finally, at the poles, the air is sinking. You can see the little squished arrow up there. So that means we have high pressure and a desert. So yes, the North and the South Pole are deserts. That means they have a lack of precipitation, contrary to popular belief. Okay, so this is going to be a desert area of the planet. Now, now that we've got our pressure belts, now we can talk about wind direction. Remember, wind always flows from high to low pressure. But when, since the Earth is spinning, you have to account for the Coriolis effect. So it's not going to go directly from high to low. It's going to spin. So in this location, you have to have a little spin to it. And you can see it has a spin towards the left-hand side of your screen or towards the east. Okay? And that gives us the <clears throat> easterly trade winds. So they're coming from the east. So that's why we call them the Northeast Trades, and these guys are coming from the East, so we call them the Southeast Trades. Okay, and then we do the same thing for the next wind belt. Okay, it goes high to low with a little spin, and you can see it's coming from the West, so we call it the prevailing westerlies. And finally, at the poles, again, high to low, little spin, and that makes the wind come from the East to the West, giving us the polar easterlies. So you can see this whole complicated system is all starting with the rising air at the equator and building from there to creating the pressure systems across our planet and the global wind system. Now that you've seen me explain this once, you're going to go through the PowerPoint, watch it one more time. You're going to click through it yourselves and draw it into your worksheet just as you see it here. Enjoy.